A full stadium, Barca versus Real, Champions League. Nothing out of the ordinary, you say? Think twice. This is a Barca Femini game, FC Barcelona's women's team. It was only a bit more than a decade ago, Barca Femini were training at whatever pitch was available and usually at ridiculous hours of the day. Not anymore, now they dominate in Spain. Lleva 35 partidos sin perder, seguidos. It's huge, it's special, it's exciting. And broke the world record for attendance at a women's game in March 2022. Bueno, eso es maravilloso. But just a few years back, nobody seemed to care much about them. At the time, the team and the league were nowhere near professional, stuck in amateur mode and usually cast aside. What's happened here? Barça Femini have only been a professional side since 2015. Barcelona's men's team in the meantime seemed to have forgotten what made the club great. Antes me decían, queremos ser como Ronaldo, queremos ser como Messi. Hoy en día, con este tipo de figuras, ya me dicen, pues queremos ser como Alexia. I came here to Spain to find out why Barça Femini has become such a powerhouse in such a short amount of time. That's a good question. I want to know the answer as well. Well, Barcelona, Spain's second largest city, isn't exactly a stranger to football, right? One of the local teams, FC Barcelona, are one of the most famous clubs in the world. Its stadium, Camp Nou, holds up to 100,000 people, Europe's biggest football temple. At the club museum, it's trophies galore. And you can hardly count how many stars have played here. Including Jesus. The women's team saga began in the 70s. Some pioneers got together, though back then it was just a hobby. They were barred from officially joining FC Barcelona. As was the case for most women players around the world, the football establishment rejected them. They had to accept being treated like total amateurs. Check out this referee. Society just wasn't ready. Even less so in the Spain of the late 70s, says the man who wrote this book on Barça Femini. No olvidemos que en España veníamos de la época de la dictadura y había como un sustrato sociológico muy machista, muy misógino, que entendía que el fútbol era solamente cosa de hombres. Things only slowly started to change in the 90s, and it took until 2002 to make the women's side an official part of the club. Somos un poco ambivalente, que es del 2002 al 2015, que el club, digamos, eh, bueno, es admitido como parte de, de, del Fútbol Club Barcelona, pero no puede entrenarse en las mismas condiciones que los chicos. Tienen que irse a unos terrenos municipales y en condiciones bastante deplorables, compartiendo campos con diversas disciplinas, con atletas, con jugadores de rugby. Like other mega clubs, Barça were not really interested in women's football. In the 2010s, they decided to get serious about it with some immediate results. Taking the women's game more serious reflected a trend among big names in football. Man City, Bayern or PSG made similar choices. In 2012, Barça Femini won their first league title and did the same in 2013, 2014 and 2015 when they turned professional. Samara Hunter is a US-born football journalist who lives and works in Spain. For a long time, she focused on La Liga's male players, Kroos, Rakitic or Ter Stieg. In recent years, though, she witnessed how FC Barcelona bought into the idea of a serious women's team. They've built a really solid project with a great foundation. They've looked at the blueprint from the men's side. They've copied and pasted the DNA of the club from the men's team to the women's side. Barca's DNA was shaped by iconic figures like Johan Cruyff and Pep Guardiola. The three Ps, possession, pressure and position, a system that has sent generations of opponents into despair. The women's team are doing the same. Powerful, dominant and leading the way. And this at a time when the men's team seemed to have lost their way. Okay, in 2015 they won the Champions League, but since then they've lost touch with the club's DNA and identity 
leading to some embarrassing results. While FC Barcelona's women's team flourished, they reached their first Champions League semi-final in 2017. So, did Barça Femini choose, like many of its peers, to use the financial power of its parent club to accelerate growth? Lyon has done it, Chelsea has done it, Man City has an English core, but they have done it too. I think we all know the situation that the club finds itself in now financially, which is to say that they're up to here in debt, <laughs> over a billion euros. They need to pay back um, for money that they've taken out on loan, for example. So I don't think it's all about the money. I think that they really have looked inward and said, let's grow players, let's develop players. Barça Femini's sporting director stresses they weren't keen on buying a superstar ensemble. When we started in 2015, the project was not to invest a lot of money and to uh, do the best signings in the world. What we wanted is to develop the players, to try to do a project of that we feel proud as a club, to try to invest in, in players in the academy. What do the following players have in common? Iniesta, Xavi, Busquets, Piquet. Correct, they all were trained at La Masia, which is Barca's football academy. Oh, sorry, I forgot Messi, of course. La Masia is just as much a part of FC Barcelona's DNA as the three Ps mentioned earlier. The Youth Academy has always been such a fundamental pillar for this club historically anyway. And I think now that they can do that on the women's side of things too really is just what they're all about um, compared to maybe other clubs. Still, women have only been fully admitted in the residency since 2021. But since their first league title, Barça Femini embraced a regional identity fielding many homegrown players from Catalonia, the proud and independent-minded region Barcelona is part of. Ten years on, the 2022 squad has key Catalan players that have been at the club for quite some time. Alexia Putellas, who joined in 2012. Marta Torrejón, 2013. Vicky Lozada, 2016. Aitana Bonmati, also 2016. Claudia Pina, 2017. Or Leila Wahabi, 2018. This team became a force to be reckoned with and reached the 2019 Champions League final. Where they were trashed 4-1 by Lyon, long the dominant force in European women's football. Barça Femini's time hadn't come yet. But sometimes these are the moments when the big champions are born. Se vieron desbordadas por unas jugadoras francesas que iban como aviones. Entonces, a partir de ahí, justo acabar el partido, se hicieron como un juramento, digamos, entre las jugadoras y el staff técnico, que ellas lo que tenían que hacer a partir de entonces era entrenarse más. Y entonces el salto fue brutal. Three Spanish league titles followed: 2020, 21, and 22. Barça Femini won the Champions League in 2021 and Alexia Putellas the Ballon d'Or the same year. All this has created one big buzz in Barcelona. Barça Femini are the talk of the town. They captured the groove that the man lost, at least until early 2022. And Barça Femini are now splashing cash on accomplished players from abroad, like Swede Fridolina Rolfe, signed in 2021. She feels the vibe as well. I think the main reason is like the interest. You you see the people in the city; they are really interested. They are following us. I think it's the interest and also the that the team has been so successful and the playing style that it's interesting to watch. Okay, let's be real. Barça Femini don't always draw 90,000. Usually, they play at Estadio Johan Cruyff. Average attendance: 3,000. And TV revenue is still a far cry from the men's game. MediaPro, Spain's leading sports management agency, is based in Barcelona. Its CEO, also dubbed the king of football, says this about Barça Femini's success. Esto no tiene una traducción económica inmediata ni en los derechos de televisión ni en el marketing o la publicidad asociada. Quiero decir que las inversiones publicitarias eh, no son muy importantes ni van a serlo desde mi punto de vista a corto plazo. Those passionate about Barça Femini don't care, though. 
Football writer Andrea Sanchez travels three hours from Valencia to see them play and see something in them that used to mark the men's team. Estoy muy enganchada al Barça femenino porque creo que realmente llevan el espíritu competitivo que yo me gusta te, que tenga un equipo y sobre todo por el estilo de juego de, de tiki taka que se dice. And although individual stars such as Alexia Putea stand out, as with the best Barça side, it's always about the team. Eh, esto es un premio individual pero sin duda es un éxito colectivo. Espero que lo sintáis así, porque yo de verdad que lo siento así. Creo que también el éxito de Alexia Putellas con su Balón de Oro ha dado una visibilidad que la Liga en sí española no tenía y creo que poco a poco va existiendo la Liga Española y el Barça, por supuesto. Barça Feminist Success has made women's football in Catalonia popular. 15,000 players, that's 10% of those registered in 2022, are women. Five years back, that number was still only around 10,000. Catalonia's numbers are significantly higher than the rest of Spain. One explanation, role models are easier to identify now for young girls than in the past. Titles, awards, 90,000 people in the stadium, well, that helps. Freestyler Paloma has noticed a shift. Las niñas tienen referentes. Yo cuando voy a darles clase de freestyle a las niñas, eh, les pregunto, ¿queréis ser futbolistas? Y me dicen, sí. Y les pregunto, ¿cómo quién queréis ser? Y me, antes me decían, queremos ser como Ronaldo, queremos ser como Messi. Hoy en día, con este tipo de figuras, ya me dicen, pues queremos ser como Alexia. Could the successful model applied here be adopted by other clubs elsewhere? Every club has to find what works well for them and incorporate elements of their own culture and their own local society, if that makes sense, because FC Barcelona as a club very much reflects Catalan society. So I think in a specific context it works for them, but it can be inspirational in the sense that you can look at them and say, well, this works incredibly well for them. Let's study what they're doing and how they do it and try to emulate it, but adapt it to what makes us uniquely us. And this is what Barça Femini are doing right. Their identity makes the city vibrate. More titles will come and the team will use this momentum to become even more unstoppable. What do you think? Will Barça Femini continue to lead the way when it comes to women's football? Or will there be another club soon with an even better strategy and even more success? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.